Welcome back. This is Sandy with Sandy's Organized Chaos. And today we're going to be doing this autumn inspired two tone chunky glitter ombre. As always, I'll make sure to put everything that I use today down in the description box below so that way you can shop these items if you'd like to. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to that subscribe button and let's wake up, prep these tumblers and slay all day. Let's do this. Now I am just working on a basic wine tumbler. This is a 16 ounce wine tumbler, I do believe. And I went ahead and I ombre it a burnt sienna and this navy at the top to go along with the glitters that I'm using. But of course you can use any size tumbler you have that you would like to do a basic ombre on or any glitters as well. But today I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys my complete October chaos box. I'm gonna use all of these colors today on this tumbler. The first one was Autumn Sunset. I'm also gonna be using Autumn Breeze. Those are my two chunky colors that I'm gonna be using. Now the two fine colors that I'm gonna be using to kind of mix in between. This first one is called Caladium. And I'm going to be mixing that in with my Autumn Breeze, and this is called Pumpkin Spice. And those are the glitters that I will be using today. But again, use any color combination you already have on hand to do your basic glitter ombre. Now to apply my glitters, I'm going to be using the epoxy method. I really find that my glitters lay much flatter if I do it this way, but that is just how I do it. So if you'd like to use Mod Podge, go ahead and do it that way. But again, I'm just going to use epoxy. Now I know that you guys are very used to just using a very small amount of epoxy when it comes to glittering your tumblers, but when I am working with chunky glitters, I add more than you're supposed to. The reason why I add more than you're supposed to is because it really helps with those glitters to lay completely flat onto your tumbler without having to help it too much at all. Now after I have my epoxy nice and smoothed out, I just like to make sure there's no peaks and valleys in it. I want to make sure that everything is fully coated so that way our glitters have something to stick to. I'm going to go ahead and start with the very bottom here. I'm starting off with Autumn Sunset. Now again, I'm working on such a small space. Typically when I do an ombre, I almost hold it upright to get that good kind of fade job going into my other colors but because i'm working with such a small surface you're going to notice that i'm not raising it up as much because i didn't want that ombre to go too far up my tumbler and you may also notice that i'm not putting too much on at one time what i like to do is just take pinches of my glitter apply it around make sure that it's sinking down into my epoxy and kind of just fill in where I need to. Now again, this is just a light coating of that autumn sunset on the bottom, but I'm gonna go ahead and move on to my autumn breeze at the top so that way we can start to make that ombre effect. Then we're gonna come back through with our fine glitters and fill it in even more. So again, I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna make sure that I hit up my top really well. Then I'm gonna go ahead and tilt it just at a slight angle so that way those blues don't slide too far down my tumbler so I can kind of control what I need to do. And again, I'm just not adding too much at a time. I'm just kind of filling it as I go. And another thing I'd like to mention to you guys is each tumbler, I kind of have a point where I like to stop and start my ombres. And on wine glasses in particular, since I'm working on one right now, my stop and start zone for my ombres is right at the hip of the wine glass. But it's a really good visual on where you want to do that, especially if you have a whole big grouping of tumblers that you have to do and they will all almost come out exactly the same if you have a start end point on each and every single one of them. Now, as you can see, right into my chunky glitter on the bottom here, I'm gonna start sprinkling in my fine glitter and this is called Pumpkin Spice. It's a holographic ultra fine cut so it blends in really well and does a very good job at fading my colors now what you couldn't see was where my shaker was now i'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the caladium on the other side here again we're just filling in any little areas that didn't get filled in but i have my shaker very high up in the air i probably have it almost a foot away from my tumbler and i just let those fine glitters cascade into one another and that's what really starts to give that that visual of an ombre effect right around the middle. But for anybody new out there that is just starting out and just starting out with doing ombres, I know you guys got this. Keep going, keep working at it, and you will figure out a method that is correct for you and that will work the best for you. 
So just a quick recap as I tap down my glitters and kind of push everything back off the rim there. All I did was take my chunky glitters, I pinched them close to the tumbler so I had a little bit more control over it since we're working on such a small space and I didn't want that ombre to go up too far. I pinched them close to it, I faded those into each other, then I came back through with my fine glitters and really faded that in where I held my shaker really high above my tumbler and just let those really blend together. Now I'm just going to finish patting these glitters down and then I'm going to let that cure overnight because I'm not using my quick set epoxy. I used my regular plus epoxy here. I'm going to let that cure overnight and then we'll move on to this next step. Now here is my tumbler the next day. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my rim really well. I like to do this in between everything, you guys know that. It just really helps out in the end with cleaning it up and making it look right for your customers. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that back onto its wand now that it's nice and trimmed up. I'm gonna go outside and spray it really well with my, my two times ultra semi-gloss here. And this, the reason why I do this is because sometimes those glitters like to wick away your epoxy if it doesn't have anything to hold on to. And that two times ultra really gives gives it something to grip onto over your raw glitter. And will help out with those fish eyes that might occur. Now again, I have some epoxy mixed up here. This is 15 milliliters of epoxy to go over my raw glitter. Now, because again, I'm working on such a small surface, I only needed 15 milliliters of epoxy. But if I were doing a 20 ounce, I'd probably do 20, 20 mLs and so on and so forth. And for this round, I'm actually going to be using my quick coat epoxy so it goes a little bit quicker so we can apply those decals just a little bit sooner. But all I'm going to simply do is apply all 15 mLs of that epoxy. I'm going to place it onto my turner. I'm going to hit it up really good with my torch. The torch is going to help pop any of those micro bubbles that might occur under or, you know, through your raw glitter there because that's when it, they tend to really pop up is when you do this coat over the raw glitter. So I'm going to hit it up really good with my torch. I'm going to let that cure about four to five hours and then we'll be ready to apply our decal. Now speaking of the decal, I'm going to show you guys how I apply decals to kind of a curved surface. But first we're going to go ahead and prep our tumbler here before we put on our decal. Now this again was after four or five hours. It's ready to have its decal applied. Again, I'm going to come back through. I'm going to trim up its rim really well. And because we applied a decent amount of epoxy over our raw glitter, I'm going to go ahead and extremely lightly take 500 grit sandpaper here. I think it was P500 is what it said. Very light grit sandpaper and I'm barely rubbing it onto my tumbler. There wasn't too much that needed to be done. There were some little points sticking out, but when you're working with metallic glitters, you definitely don't want to sand it very hard because you run the risk of damaging your glitter and we don't want that so you just want to very gently go over everything and then i'm going to wipe it down really good with some rubbing alcohol and to get all those little specks off there but again because we applied a decent amount of epoxy over raw glitter i feel comfortable enough to go ahead and apply my decal on this round but if you feel like it's just too lumpy for your decal to go on this round go ahead give it a light sanding and apply another coat of epoxy before you put on your decal. Now, depending on the decal that I want to use, now I'm just using a quote today, but obviously if you're putting a monogram or a name or you're putting an actual picture on here, you're going to have to gauge from there what you would like to do. But since it's just a quote, I like to go about three inches wide by about three and a half inches in length. The vinyl that I'm using today is just a textured metallic vinyl and it is very forgiving so that's another reason why I didn't really feel like I needed another coat of epoxy. If I was using the, just a regular metallic vinyl I would definitely have put another coat over because you guys know those metallic uh, vinyls uh, show everything. So <laughs> this textured vinyl is extremely great for hiding any little imperfections. Now I already have my transfer tape over top because that's essentially what we're gonna be applying our decal with. What I like to do is cut it as close as possible to my decal. I go ahead and put it where I would like it onto my tumbler and then I start to see where it pops up when I, when I press it down onto it. I notice that right here where it says, got this right above it, it started to kind of bend up. And so that's exactly where I want to bend or cut it. So that way it will have a nice shape then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through and trim up in between every single letter so that way when we go to apply it, I can adjust those as I go to make sure that they're nice and straight. Once they start to hit, hit that 
hip of the curve of the tumbler. <laughs> But I know it can be so frustrating when you go to apply decal and it starts to crinkle up in places you didn't want to crinkle up. So this really helps out with that. And just another quick thing I wanted to show you guys that sometimes these metallic vinyls are hard to get off its backing. So what I like to do is I just flip it completely upside down onto my table and I just really roll it. As you can see, I'm pressing as hard as I can right onto the backing there so that way it sticks down to my transfer tape. And that's all I do to really help out those tricky vinyls from coming off their backing. Now all you simply want to do is figure out where you'd like it onto your tumbler. You're gonna line it up really well. You're gonna go ahead and get the top portion stuck down nice and good. See how it, it's up like that? See, that wouldn't have been no good. If we wouldn't have made those slits, it would be not good. So we're gonna go ahead and do whatever it is you've and now we're going to simply come through i like to stick down kind of the top first get it lined up and then i'm just going to go letter by letter and just make sure that everything is properly the way it should be so that that way it's nice and straight and there you go you got this and now it is ready for its last two finishing coats of epoxy. But before I do that, because I'm working with a metallic type vinyl, I'm gonna go ahead and do another spritz of my semi-gloss clear just to make sure that my epoxy has something to stick to. And it also helps out with those micro bubbles that tend to occur around your metallic vinyls as well. But after that, I go ahead and give it its last two finishing coats of epoxy and she is ready to go. Whether you take this design and duplicate it as is, or you take it and let it inspire you to create something that is completely your own, I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching this tutorial today. Again, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time.